Welcome, everybody, back to Mission Control, a podcast focusing on executive directors and nonprofit leaders and how they strive to make positive impacts in their community. I'm your host, Paul Schmidt, owner and creative video strategist for Introduce Multimedia. And it is my pleasure to introduce you to a new friend, um, Lauren with Aspire. So, Lauren, how are you? I'm great. I'm excited to be here. Good, good. And you are the founder, right? Founder, CEO, all the all the titles? No, I am the executive director, but I'm not the founder. The founder is my predecessor who uh, was right. brave enough to hand this over to me. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So how we typically start these is because the name of the show is Mission Control, we start out with telling the audience about your mission. What is the mission of Aspire? So the mission of Aspire, and our full name is Ready, Set, Aspire, um, is to educate, equip, and empower individuals to make positive choices, have healthy relationships, and become who they aspire to be. Um, And we do that through sharing resources, spending time um, and energy through guest speaking so that we're able to provide holistic relationship education and community empowerment initiatives for our participants. That's amazing. Well, right off the bat, um, I forgot, actually, that this wasn't something you founded, but you inherited. So talk a little bit about that. How, how did you how did you get into the role that you are in? Uh, so it was, it's a fun story. <laughs> so I uh, became uh, became aware of the organization when it was uh, Aspire Relationship Education. We just recently um, rebranded this year um, in 2018. So I was actually doing contract work for different organizations and businesses across the greater Lansing area. And one of my clients had a job description come across their desk and they're like, I hate to give you this, but it honestly sounds like they're looking for you. And I agreed. And so I reached out to the founder, Lori Bolin, and turns out that she was actually responsible for a program that changed my life. And so um, at the very end of our discussion, she's like, can you see yourself running this one day? And I said, you know what, oddly, I think I might be, I think I might be able to do that. So I came in as the assistant director um, with the intention of learning as much as I possibly could from her um, until it was time for me to take over in 2020. Well, let's uh, let's back it up a little bit more. You said she came up with a program that changed your life. Yeah. What was that program? It's called the SMART program. Um, it has been in the Greater Lansing area since 1992. And so um, up until more recent years, it really was just supporting local districts with uh, sexual health education and really expanding the conversation beyond just disease prevention but looking at um, more of a sexual risk avoidance based education that's more holistic, sharing more around um, healthy versus unhealthy relationships, some of the skills necessary to make positive choices, set boundaries, communicate, um, consent and different things like that. Um, And a big emphasis on stopping and starting over. And that's one thing that changed my life at the time. I was a freshman in high school. It was a very very dynamic year for me, to put it lightly. And I was a student who needed to hear that I can I could do something new. Um, and so when I was ready, I actually fell back on all the skills that I learned in that four day class, mm-hmm. my freshman year in health class. And it radically changed my life and the way that I operated, the way I felt about myself, the type of relationships that I built um, and the intentional moves that I made in my relationships to get me to where I am today. So I'm so thankful that I found her in 2018 because I didn't remember the name of the program. I just remember what I learned. I remember the personal stories um, and I remember the message that I received that helped me to get to where I am today. Wow, that's huge. Yeah. That is really that's really that's really interesting to have something that early on that is so trans transformative um, to to where you are today. And so when did you, when did you realize that Aspire 
uh, Ready, Set, Grow, or Ready, Set, Grow, Aspire now. Ready, Set, Aspire, yep. Um, was the, was the, the, the creator of this transformative, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, course that you took in high school. When did you find that out? And you're like. During my recon, before reaching out to her to just inquire about the job description, it was a part-time job. Um, At the time, I was coming out of being a stay-at-home mom that was doing contract work and really tried to to decide what type of work I wanted to do in the nonprofit sector. Um, And so when I was doing my recon on, okay, what is this organization? What do they do? I'm reading it through the program page and I'm like, huh, this is familiar. So in talking to her uh, to schedule our appointment, I found out then that it was in fact exactly what I was a beneficiary of when I was 14. Oh my gosh. That is a, that is such a great serendipitous circle. Oh, yeah. my Lord. that is so good. Um, so you've got this job. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's a job that you probably didn't imagine that uh was like had such a touch on you for so long or had had been a part now moving into this position um how did you what kind of skills did you develop over time to get you to the point where you're like yes i think i'm ready to take on what this what this uh um position. I know that you said you contracted, but Mm -hmm. how did you get into doing what you do contract wise too? What is, uh, what is the, you know, that educational journey of Lauren between freshman and high school to (laughs) post, uh, you know, being a mom and being a subcontractor? What, what, what's that journey looking like? Oh man, I, I'm a firm believer that there's a thread of just wonder that's through all of our lives. And so I think this role has been just the culmination of one really great thread, which has been to serve people. Um, I come from a long line of business people, a long line of entrepreneurs. And so I always knew that I wanted to be in a more entrepreneurial role growing up. Um, My first official job was a bookkeeper for my family's company. Um, They had just incorporated and my bonus dad and his brother started a business called Custom Built Design and Remodeling. Um, And so they took a huge chance on a 16, 17 year old girl and had her run their books. Um, And so that gave me a lot of confidence as far as like exposure to business and um, payroll and operational, you know, procedures and things like that. Taxes, my goodness. Um, And then going to school um, after being a insurance agent, actually, I wanted to work with people. So we talked through it and I decided that insurance would actually be a really great opportunity for me. I actually love new environments and new people. um, And I got a chance to meet so many great people during that time of my life. Um, And I supported pastors. So one of the things that I did was I supported pastors and I supported um, senior groups to be an educational resource for their um, parishioners and their community members um, to share some information around topics that are really difficult to talk about, like um, end of life care, as well as, um, you know, medical insurance, like what am I doing after Medicare? And so through that, I realized that there are a lot of people in communities that are in these kind of service roles that have this, you know, deep conviction for why they got into that role, but there's a lot of burnout. And so I went to school so that I could um, study ministry leadership, which is an organizational leadership degree um, with a ministry specialization and had a business minor, uh, business management minor. And through that, most of my cohort was going to be pastors and I was going so that I could support leaders, whether they're in a para para, uh, ministry or they're just in a, you know, traditional type of ministry role. Um, And through through all of those things, I learned how to lead people, how to uh, come up with programming, how to raise money, different things like that. Um, And that's just an abbreviated version of my story, how I got here, where I felt confident enough to take the leap. Wow. Um, I mean, that's amazing. And so it's like a almost a 20 year journey of, of, you know, serving folks and did i hear you correctly that you said your bonus dad mm-hmm. yeah 
he developed or started custom built remodeling. Mm -hmm. I'm his brother. Yep. He has since uh, left the business and retired, but okay. when you're an entrepreneur, you don't retire. So he started a new business doing concrete coatings and loving that. Um, and so it's a little, a little bit less strenuous, if you could say, but he's still doing things that he really loves and creating beautiful spaces for people to enjoy. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And speaking of creating beautiful spaces, I think that's a little bit about what you do, but it may not be as external as it, as it is internal. And yeah. so talk about, you know, when you, when you started in the role that you're in now, how did you, how did you feel about the support system that you got in trying to like be entrepreneurial with Aspire? If you don't mind me just call just abbreviating it to. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. okay. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure if you did acronyms like RSGA or what. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> We're working on it. It's my heart. That's fair. But yeah, so talk about the support you got when you when you came into your role, um, other than your your mentor who founded the business, um, because now it's up to you to really get yourself out into the community, to find mm -hmm. folks that you need to help, stuff like that. What what kind of support did you feel like uh you got when you first when you first started? Well, my husband is my greatest supporter. Um, taking on a role like this is a it's a family sacrifice, honestly, to, you know, take something and um, grow it and get it to a sustainable place. Um, and I actually started my job January 1st of 2020. So mm. March presented me with a unique opportunity to learn many new things, um, to refocus in on our mission. We really started out of a necessity to keep our program going. And so we had a 501c3. We had an organization, a very clear program, but our mission wasn't as clear um, and how we could be creative in that. And so it did present me with an opportunity um, to really be more mission centered, which is my own personal kind of mission is to help um, help leaders be more mission centered in their their approaches. And so that was um that was a it was hard and my board ended up being one of my greatest supporters you know alongside my my boyfriend i affectionately call him my husband nick um and you know where they really encouraged me like you know what lauren we trust you you're here in this time for a reason and had it not been for the transition that happened at the time that it did there's no way that we would still be here today um just having the you know just skills and unique education that I've had. Um, it definitely was, you know, providential in so many words for us to transition at the time that we did. Um, and then our our supporters, like our grantors, our individual donors, um, even our community partners, like mentoring agencies that we've partnered with throughout the last few years, we began partnering with them in 2019. And so again, one of those things, we couldn't have written that story um were huge supports huge supports for us to keep going um where i felt like okay we're doing this we're helping people it's not the way that we always have but we're able to really reach people at home um and that was something that we had never ventured off to do before then so without them i would not be here by any means <laughs> so i mean and that that really leads me your, your first statement really leads me into okay what uh what did you uh learn because you were you said so you started you where you are mm -hmm. january of 2020 less than three months later the world is not the same yeah how did you take how did you have to kind of like i know that you got the support but what are some of the things that you you had to implement or that you had to develop during that time because you know communication with people meeting with people doing all the things that you probably did normally mm -hmm. is has, has dramatic dramatically changed so what what were some of the things that you had to uh really uh like lean into oh ooh. i think the first thing i had to do was mental 
which was I had to divorce my marriage to the past and what I knew, my familiarity, um, and really look at, you know, the vision of if things never go back to what they were, what does it look like for us to step into the future that we can't see? Um, and so one of the ways that we did that was we decided to prepare as if we would never walk into another classroom again. And so that's where our online academy was born um, so that we could be a resource, we could provide um, quality programming for anybody, no matter where they were, um, and, and in a way that's self-guided to where they don't need us holding their hand through the whole thing, but we've developed something that really gives them a very full um, multi-dimensional experience to learn some really key concepts like grit, understanding our emotions, how to have positive communication, um, belonging, a sense of belonging, um, things like that. Some of those kind of internal assets that our framework that we already built our programs on um, virtually. And so we, we started doing that. Um, one thing I learned during my time working for my bonus dad was um, a great leader cares for their people the best that they possibly can. And so um, immediately I reached out to all of the people that, you know, were a part of our organization at any time, whether it was they were just a storyteller or they were a presenter um, and figured out if there were ways that they wanted to come alongside during that time. We weren't able to offer a whole lot, but we were able to offer some uh, some hours for them to make some money. Some of them lost jobs or they were laid off from jobs for a period of time, or they just were like students that had nowhere to go and nothing to do. Um, and so we were able to just kind of pull from everybody's strength so that we could support our community in a, in a different way um, virtually. Um, after that, we also looked at our programming a little bit differently because um, having conversations about uh, sexual health and different things like that on the internet poses some different um, elements that you just don't have to consider in a controlled environment like a classroom. And so we really wanted to see, okay, how do we expand the conversation beyond just uh, sexual risk avoidance, um, delay, some of these kind of very physical, romantically um, focused topics, but how do we expand the, con the conversation to an interpersonal and intrapersonal relationship? What's the relationship I have with myself? What's the relationship I have with my community, um, my direct community, my broad community? And that's really what, what drove how we do our programming now and some of the things that we were open to. Um, once things opened up, we were able to go back outside. That's when we started our creative collaboration, similar to what you see behind, or behind me <laughs> there. Um, and so that, that was really, I guess, the birthplace of being creative, taking some risks. No. Well, before I let you go, could you like show what what's behind you really quick? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead. Now? All right. Yeah, yeah, right now. Right now. Let's, let's take a look at that. That's amazing. That's right time. So we had, hopefully you can see it, but there might be a little bit of a glare here. Okay. So we uh, had this piece open up at a K to 12 open mic night that was hosted at Blue Owl Coffee Company um, in Lansing. The first piece, we actually started in Old Town and mm -hmm. we invited people to come out and start this community painting. It was gonna travel um, between the two Lansing shops over the course of 60 days. And over the course of 60 days, it ended up becoming this unbelievable piece. Um, we also have two others that were started in the East Lansing location that was located downtown East Lansing on campus. So lots of students taking study breaks and some of that mental and emotional, you know, expression to be able to go and add something to the board. They were even adding things to the paper that we wrapped the tables with. That ended up being its own piece. It hurt so bad to have to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I took lots of pictures. And um, yeah, it was just a really interactive way to support mental and emotional health. Um, they were both opened alongside a little bit more of a formal message of sharing who do we want to become in order to become, uh, to raise the next generation. Um, again, some of those developmental assets that we, um, we use as a framework. And then for the East Lansing one on campus, it was how do we 
turn our campus town into our hometown through healthy relationships. That's one of the most unique and valuable parts of going away to school, being on a campus are the, the relationships that you develop. And so we had conversations around that and people started the piece talking about home, which was pretty great. I have to admit, I think that uh, my time in college, I'm, I'm still really close with the folks that I met there. And uh, yeah, I think that that's a huge, huge um, uh, connection, connecting point. And speaking of connection and connecting to the folks that you work with and help, when did you realize, and you probably al al you always had, but when was it really key that what you were doing post during and post pandemic was was so necessary oh that's a great question um wow i think during was when i was getting dms and chats in from parents that were saying thank you so much for sharing these messages it has opened up necessary conversations in our homes that we've never had before um, that was really special. Um, students finding me on social media, which was a little scary, if I'm honest, and sharing their personal stories of, I've been bullied in school, um, I've been home, and I've been trying to figure out how I can make the best of this time. What you shared with us during class meant everything to me. Thank you for connecting me to mentors different things like that. Just so, some of those personal testimonies that we were getting in during, during the pandemic, um, just coming out of the pandemic, I think when I knew, okay, I think we're really onto something, was when we were able to get outside and partner with amazing artists like Mila Lynn um, and be a support for the things that she was doing to provide empowerment exercises for people of all ages. You had kids as small as two years old and uh, all the way to elderly that were participating in the creative collaborations that we were doing um, and hearing their just excitement around it. Um, having a group of students of, I mean, kids like elementary age kids, middle school age kids, uh, writing messages on the sidewalk to let every person that walked past that place feel love and how they wanted to communicate that, I knew then, I'm like, this is this is what we should be doing. So yeah, it's been great. It's been a great, a great journey. Oh, it sounds like it. It sounds like it. But well, how, how did you manage to keep your, your energy up? Mm -hmm. or, because like I said, I mean, I don't know if you consider yourself an introvert versus extrovert, uh, but, you know, your whole thing was engaging with people where they're at mm -hmm. um, in person. Yeah. And how did you, how did you uh, do the same for yourself? Oh, great question. Um, one collaboration that we're a part of was a big heart filler. Um, it was a huge energizer for me personally as a leader, and that's the Capital Area Mentoring Partnership. Um, it's been through different transitions since that time, but at that time, we had such a tight-knit group that really looked at how can we support the community and how can we support one another. That kept me going. It really did. Um, my Again, my husband and I and my family, our kids, um, spending a lot of time together that we wouldn't necessarily spend just the four of us. The, I think the first walk that we took, that was just the four of us. It wasn't a breakup of divide and conquer, you know, one parent with one kid um, or just the parents going out doing something um, or parents with both kids. It was the four of us actually taking walks together. We did that for the first time during the pandemic. And I don't even think we realized until that point, like, oh my gosh, we've always had variations of this type of thing, but not just the four of us at the same time with nothing pulling at our attention, um, going for a walk and talking to people in their yards and letting the kids, you know, ride scooters and 
belly surf on their skateboards down the driveway. Like those moments were everything for us. We refaced our home as a family um, and had a great time doing that, you know, painting porches and all the things. Um, and then my church community as well. Um, I don't necessarily keep it to just the people that come to the four walls every week, but you know, the extended church community, my really good friends, um, people that I've met throughout the years um, through faith communities were also uh, a big support in just keeping everybody uplifted. So yeah, my team, oh gosh, I cannot negate to say that. My team, my administrative director at the time um, was, I mean, everything. We always tease that we were each other's other half of each other's brain. Um, huge support. And then my most recent program specialist, Isaac Janda Orr, who is now a licensed counselor, um, another huge, huge support when it came to that because the crazy ideas I would bring, they were like, you know what, you're not that nuts, let's do it. <laughs> So it's encouraging when you have people around you that believe in what it is that you, you know, you're trying to accomplish and how to get it done. Well, that leads me to my next question, actually. Well, well done. This is a good segue. What, what are some of the crazy ideas that you have in, in store for Aspire going forward? <laughs> oh, goodness. So um, we are developing and actually just about to launch our capital campaign for a more structured co creative collaboration. Um, it's multidisciplinary. So there's uh, there's art um, from a you know painting standpoint, there's more creative expression, um, very chaotic creative expression. There are um, storytelling, poetry writing, um, self-portrait creating that's more focused on who you wanna become, not just what you wanna do. Um, and, you know, hoping to connect the generation. So not just for kids, but for kids and their grownups, um, teens and their grownups to actually come sit around the table, learn some things, some really important skills that we're able to teach, you know, more systematically, um, but then connect with one another around the arts and relationship education. Um, that's something, again, that is a bit crazy because we're coming out of the classroom. Um, it's going to take you know, the community to come around it. Um, but that's my most recent crazy idea. Uh, the rest is supporting other organizations that are hoping to be more creative. Um, so my own personal like leadership crazy idea is to help support organizations that are hoping to be more creative in how they're bringing these messages to their communities. Um, I'm actually in the process of working with a group out in Montana um, right now virtually because we now know we can, we mm -hmm. can everywhere um, to mm -hmm. help them uh, expand um, and enhance their programming and how they're communicating with their communities as well. So that's my most recent crazy idea. <laughs> uh, I like I like the path. I like the path you're on. And so I always ask this. I know I kind of touched on this a little bit when you talked about getting together and taking a walk as a family and such like this, but what are some of the other aspects that you do for yourself to kind of like step away from the day to day, um, uh, you know, just to just to unwind, decompress, however you want to, however you want to uh, frame it. Yeah. So what, what do you do? I journal a lot. Um, I journal a lot. I read a lot. I watch stupid videos on TikTok. <laughs> um, okay. I'm a I'm a compulsive crafter, so I take my hand to different types of crafts. Um, I'm probably too easily bored with something once I feel like I've mastered it to the point that I want to master it at. I'm like, all right, let me try something new. Keeps my mind going, keeps me on my toes. Um, but those are probably the biggest ones. And then I enjoy thrift shopping, which is um, kind of a weird thing to say. It fills me up, but I enjoy it. Just the idea of sustainability um finding something that someone found as like they didn't want it anywhere near them and it's like actually this is actually pretty cool um or just meeting people out and drinking lots of coffee yeah well <laughs> that's, that's, that's yeah. a given that's a given well yeah. i mean i have a friend who moved here from elsewhere and he said uh lansing has probably got the best thrift store culture i've ever seen 
That's really? What, that's what his 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 that's words cool. were. And so he's from a large metropolitan area. And so that's that's pretty interesting. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not a thrifter. That's just not my thing. But <laughs> my wife is. And, you know, but the but but the ability and the access to it all is amazing. So, well, that is our show, Lauren. We really appreciate you coming by and, and having a chat and learning a little bit more about you. But speaking of which, what's the best way for people to connect with you and, and talk with you personally about your organization? Um, they can email me at lauren at readysetaspire.org. It's L H A U R E N at readysetaspire.org. Um, they can follow me on Instagram, um, and that's at only one Lauren, L H A U R E N, um, the whole word one. And mm -hmm. then uh, they can call, they can call Aspire and they can find me um, that way as well. And you can find our number on our website at readysetaspire.org. Awesome. Well, once again, really appreciate you being on, on this podcast. It was a, such a great story. Um, as always, when I first heard it, I was like, ah, got to have you on. Gotta have you on. <laughs> this is great. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Paul. All right. And thank you, everybody, again, for taking some time to listen to this program. And don't miss the next episode. It's coming out in a couple of weeks. If there's someone that you know of that you would like to hear about their journey, please email us at missioncontrol at introduce.com. And if this is your first time here, please subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform. And please leave a review. Thank you again. And we'll see you again in the Control Center.